Hello, my fellow investors. In the previous video, we compared the company Burger A and company Burger B, and we showed you how easily numbers can deceive, the ratios can deceive the unintelligent investor doesn't know what's going on in the story of the company. And so in the previous video, I did return on invested capital. I calculated the total investment of the company and the net revenue return. Now, uh, the a true way to do return investors capital is doing the net revenue divided to the capital expenditure of last year. That's that way we get a more exact um, a picture of the company, how much money they gained, how much money they earned from the, what they invested in, in the company last year. So we don't take the total investment. We just take how much money the company invested last year in the company. It could be maintenance, it could be acquisitions, and to see how much the return was. So. I did in this sheet the same exact calculation and I'll still show you how easily um, you could fall in the trap of looking at ratios the wrong way. So over here I calculated in company A, so they had a net revenue of 292000 I divided to the capital expenditure of 401000 Their return on invested capital was 73%. Now next year was way higher because they earned 401 and they earned 100% return on invested capital. The next year was even higher, and the next year was even higher. But because company A was so, is so efficient and it has a lot of growth, it bought its first new store after four years, after five years. And the capital expense of that year was 2401 So that year, the return on invested capital went down to 33%. And the next year that they didn't buy a store, it was back up to 239 The year afterwards, they bought another store, so it went back down to 64 the year afterwards, they bought again it's another store, 385, now earning more money. But if you look at the average of the last 11 years, from 2012 until 2022, their average return on invested capital in this way of calculating was 247%. Now, company B, which is way less efficient, they, uh, every year, they had a little bit lower numbers. So the first year was 100, 124, and company A, the first year was um the first year it was 73 100 130 163 and company b was less efficient 100 124 150 178 but because company b wasn't buying more companies is the same rate company a was buying so they had less times that the number just went down to 27 percent like a, like over here and their average return on invested capital if you do average of the past 11 years comes out to 233 percent so in 11 years, 233%, and company A, you do the average of 11 years, it came out 247%, not so much higher. So you say, oh, look, every year we see a higher invested capital in the total investment and a higher return on the assets. You say, okay, so the average of the last 11 years, so a certain ratio was a little bit lower. No, not so much of a difference. So that's another way we could see the other numbers will be sufficient enough to decide that this average isn't so bad. Now, in the previous video, I, I made it that both companies don't have any debt. Now, uh, I made the same, uh, the same companies. I added on 10 million debt. Now, each company took 10 million debt when they bought their, their assets. So, company A took 10 million debt and they bought 10 locations for $20 million. So, the owner, or he issued stocks and got 10 million, or he took it out from his own pocket, whatever it is, they both took $10 million. And I just stuck in the every year, they're, putting, they're giving back 5% of the debt. Also company A, also company B, they started off at $10 million debt, and every year goes down in 5%. Now, company A, which has $10 million debt, and they, they value the assets at $20 million, that's the cost value. So their shareholders' equity, which was, is the total assets minus all the liabilities, is 10.292. So now their return on equity in in this case where they had that was two point is, is, is almost less than three percent because their shareholders equity is ten million and they earned two hundred ninety two thousand on ten million that's two point eighty four percent. Then the next year that goes up three four 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 five six eight and the average return on equity in the last eleven years was seven percent. But company B, which is way less efficient and earning way less money, their return on equity was way higher. Why? Because they wrote the debt at $10 million and they wrote their uh, PPE at cost value of $10 million. So the shareholders' equity was basically zero. 
although the true value of the asset was 20 million, but if they wrote their asset at 10 million as cost value and not at the current value, so their shareholders' equity is 292 and they earned 292. So their, their return on equity is the first year was 100%. Then it went down to 25, but 14, 10. So it's going down because their assets, uh, the, the debt is going down and the asset is going up. So the return is going down the whole time, more or less. But their average return on equity in the past 11 years is 20% because their equity was way, way lower. So although they were learning, they're earning much less than net revenue, but they, they, their equity was, was a lot lower. So their return on equity was a lot higher. So again, this is just an example how easily numbers can, could be manipulated and how easy it is to fall into different kinds of traps of just doing ratios without truly understanding what's inside the company. And it just, it's just a theoretical example, but every single company, there's so many different variables at what rate did they take a debt, or what, what's the mortgage rate, what price did they pay for a company, and what cost are they valuing the assets. There's tons of different variables that could be, and it's so easy to manipulate the numbers. That's why ratios are very, very important, but they have to be taken with a lot of um, consideration that things could be easily, easily changed around and manipulated. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed this video.